Ми и такива ли зато мядам? Не! Sorry. Not your fault. This whole place is ready to come down. Goddamn miracle it hasn't already. Anyway, who are you? My name is Rado Hangado. Right. Well, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Now, tell me why you're here. <laughs> I was told to seek this symbol. Do you even know what that symbol represents? Or what it is you're asking for? No. No. And yet, here you are. The spirit said that... that These I am... spirits of yours have been harassing the assassins for centuries. Ever since Ezio uncorked the bottle. Uh, but you don't even know what an assassin is, do you? Well, they're settled in then. I've got a story to tell, and it's gonna take a while to get it all out. Hope this chair won't crumble. Okay. It all started in Masyaf. And so, this is why the assassins have dedicated themselves to the pursuit of the Templars. Because if they succeed, your spirit's visions will become reality. Then I will stop them. Oh, I have no doubt you'll try. <sighs> Come on. I've something to show you. Careful. Uh, wasn't a joke when I said this place was coming apart. Why don't you repair it? With what money? What's the point? Besides, I don't have materials for the job. Maybe I can so get buy some? them. <laughs> Look at me. You think I can just march into some store purse full of pounds and go shopping? Yes. Why not? I'm so naive. Ooh. This way. Oh, hello. Don't think you can just come in here, throw those on, and call yourself an assassin. I, I did not. I, I would never presume... That's all right. I know they've a certain allure. Very well. I'll train you. Then we'll know if you've the right to wear those robes. Thank you. Um... Name's Achilles. Because of the leg? Come on then. We've work to do. Yeah, I'm guessing I need to do all the heavy lifting. Hey, Sam. Charles Lee. You are a speck of dust. A nothing. You and all your kind. Living in the dirt like animals. Oblivious to the true ways of the world. What do the Templars want? What, what they've power. always wanted. Control. They see an opportunity in the colonies. A chance for new beginnings. Unfettered by the chaos of the past. 
This is why they backed the British. Here they have a chance to illustrate the merits of their beliefs, a people in service to the principles of order and structure. I have seen what is to come if they succeed. They have to die, don't they? All of them. Even my father. Especially your father. He's the How one do you holding know the that... whole thing together. Let's see that progress. Session, sequence 5, sequence 6, oh, 12 sequences. Hmm. We'll see. So I trained in running, in climbing, in fighting, in falling. Charles Lee. Frustrated with his lack of advancement with the British, Lee moved back to New York in 1773, quickly became a supporter of the revolutionary cause, and in June of 1775 joined the Continental Army with the rank of Major General. Lee began his service under the command of George Washington, which created since Lee had some hopes of being named Commander-in-Chief of the Army himself. Given Lee's experience, he might have had a point. But he also had his drawbacks. Most notable was his temper. He was quick to anger and had a habit of being very vocally and publicly angry when he didn't get his way. Bosses love that. Lee also had some rather odd personal quirks. He was exceptionally fond of dogs and was continually surrounded by them, in particular his much-loved Pomeranian. Never trust a man continually surrounded by tiny dogs. He was also vain and liked tailored suits, but rarely washed them, meaning that he smelled like little better than his animals, and worse, according to some. Despite his failings, Lee was both a competent leader and a popular with, and popular with the troops. Washington recognized it and named one of the forts in the Hudson River, Fort Lee, in his honor. If Washington was hoping that just naming a fort after him smoothed over the rocky relationship, it amazingly didn't work. In fact, as time went on, Lee became less and less fond of Washington and became reluctant to follow his orders at all. When Washington retreated across New York and New Jersey in 1776, he sent several commands to Lee to follow him, which Lee did, but very slowly. Which may be what resulted in him being left behind and captured by the British in 1776. Still, it's understandable, he probably had to stop every five minutes to let his bloody dogs piss in a hedge. Hmm. Fortunately for Lee, he'd resigned his commission in the British Army shortly after taking on his role in the Continental Army. That meant instead of being tried for being a deserter, his imprisonment in New York was more of an inconvenience. He was wined and dined by the British, allowed to have whomever he wanted as a dinner guest. It was basically a bed and breakfast. In return, Lee gave up information about the state of the Continental Army. John Fraser, also spelled Fraser or Fraser, was a Scottish-born trader living in the area of Fort Duquesne during the French and Indian War and a participant in the Braddock Expedition. I don't think that's very interesting. And for every lesson that concerned the body, there were two that concerned the mind. Language, philosophy, logic, the arts. Achilles taught most often of the assassins and Templars, their structures, origins and purpose centuries of history condensed into a few short days i told him of the men who had burned my village of charles lee and my promise to him achilles explained that lee and his followers were templars and that they were led by none other than my own father if i was to serve the order these men would become my targets so i worked harder learned faster but for all my progress it was clear that I still had much to learn. My training had only just begun. Uh -huh. No, nothing here. New York outfit locked. All locked.
Okay. And it's my target. Good evening to you. Good morning. You said good evening. A second to ago. you as well. You taking a trip? I've decided to do something about the house. And you're going to help me. Get it? Boston, 1770. Don't stare. Sorry. Come on. This place is incredible. The people, the sounds and smells. I could walk these streets for days and know not even half its wonders. Mm -hmm. I thought the same as you upon a time. These days, I much prefer the quiet of the countryside. But there is so much life here. So many opportunities. For a few, my boy. For a few. There's a store close to here. You're to buy the items on this list. Tell them where the carriage is, and they'll see that it's loaded. Understood? Yes. Good. Yes, sir. You're also going to need a new name. Your skin is fair enough that you might pass for one with uh, Spanish or Italian blood. Better to be thought a Spaniard than a native. And both are better still than I. That is not true. What's true? And what is, aren't always the same. What would you call me, then? Kana. Yes, that will be your name. All right, then. Off you go. Kana Kenway. Old State House. Building House of Massachusetts Government. Yeah, I heard that already. The Boston Neck, the Old South Meeting House, King's Chapel, Anglican Church because it was king and the post of the child was doing whatever they want, uh, Boston was full of Puritans, nobody was willing to sell land to a budding parish, an old public burial ground, the dead couldn't complain. They're notoriously compliant. And there the church stands today. The stone chapel. I never understood these people need for independence. By the way, we gave birth to them, they were happy to suckle at our teats. In their infancy, there were a few toddler wobblers, but as soon as they got to teenage years, all they could bang on about was their independence. So they stormed out, but we know they'll be back eventually to borrow money or to get us to wash their clothes, and we'll forgive them because we are older and wiser. Visit the general store. After I think this, I 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Exit, exit, that looks like an exit. Don't go. Good doggo. So I can't stop and pet everyone. I grow tired of this. It seems each day a new fashion is ready. A new move. One out of all. Didn't I pick up two already? Donnie's had no representative, that's no say in British Parliament to add insult to injury. Some parts of the United Kingdom that had no actual residents did have seats in Parliament. This essentially meant landowners could give the cushy government appointments to whomever they wanted. These areas were known as pocket boroughs because the landowner had them in his pocket. Or rotten boroughs, a fun game is to guess why. One of the worst examples was the borough of Old Salem, which had no voters and two seats in Parliament. However, it wasn't the only one. Pocket boroughs were numerous as of 1761. And it's estimated that 250 of the 558 par parliamentary boroughs were under this kind of patronage. And the problem wasn't really corrected until the late 19th century. So when the colonists were complaining that the British government was hopelessly corrupt, they had a point. But the Constitution says we've a right to refuse. That there will be no taxation without representation. Hello. Yeah, still look very native. You lost? I need the items on this list. Will you be paying with coin or trade? I have coin. I can trade. Some of these things I have, some I don't. Lumber's hard to come by since my supplier up and vanished. I have the tools and pitch, though. Nails, too. So, uh, where do you want this delivered? Our wagon is near the state house. Okay, so I need to find another stall. I should return to Achilles. Who stands in Parliament for Boston? For New York? For Virginia? No one. Everyone! Come with us! We've had enough! Rag oh, Tiger boy. Come with me! We're headed to the Customs House to toss some quips at the lobsters. What happened? That's what we're going to find out. Hey. Loyalists were colonists who sided with the British during the Revolution. They were also known as Tories, Royalists, and King's Men. Probably also by their enemies as those bloody ass kissing Nina Hammers, among other things. While being a loyalist might seem to like to you like the bad guys, that's only because you know the Patriots won. It's very easy to use history to look smart, even if you were subjected to the American education system, and system is a strong word. In fact, by some estimates, as many as one in five colonists were actively loyalist, and many more tried not to pick a side altogether. I expect a version of the story you've heard goes something like this. The loyalists were traitors who betrayed their fellow Americans to the British. That's a nice little fiction, since from a loyalist perspective, the opposite was true. The colon colonies were founded and owned by Britain. The colonists were therefore British citizens, thus the rebels trying to disobey the king were the real traitors here. Aha, uh -huh, you see? You're a, county, a country of traitors. Try spinning that. You'd also have to be pretty brave to be a loyalist, particularly if the people in your community were patriots. Known as loyal, known loyalists were frequently dragged from their homes, beaten, burned with candles, or tarred and feathered. That's just in case you suffered from the delusion that the patriots always took the, no the moral high ground. Patriots. 
Patriots were colonists who united against the British government in the Revolutionary War. Although at the time of the Revolution, Patriots was something of a negative term. What we call Patriots today were more likely to be called Whigs, or if you were loyalist rebels. The Patriot motto was no taxation without representation, a great phrase for rebel housing, though a poor choice of catchphrase for, say, a game show host. It's also a phrase that requires a bit of unpacking for a modern audience, by which I mean you, Desmond. The colonies didn't elect representatives of the British legislature, and because of the travel distance between Britain and America and the distinct lack of aeroplanes, it wouldn't have been practical. Instead, Patriots wanted to be governed by representatives within the colonies. Of course, they did have legislatures already, but those were rather prone to being shut down by British-appointed governors whenever they didn't behave properly, read, do exactly what the governor wanted. It's hard to know how many people in the colonies were patriots, but best guess is between 40 and 45 percent of the population. The rest were either declared loyalists or people who decided to remain tactically neutral, probably a wise choice given that both sides were known to, for seizing the property of their enemies. Follow me. We're going to ruffle some red backed feathers. With me! To King Street! We'll show them! Down to the customs house for a spree! Come along! Whatever's going on here, it doesn't seem good. And why are you standing there and not doing about the guy? I say again, disperse! Congregating in this manner is forbidden! We're not going anywhere, bug! Oi! Why did you go back to England? No good can come of this chaos! Return to your homes, and all will be forgiven! Never! Not until you've answered for your crimes! You're right, coward! You don't scare us! Pointing guns at unarmed We folks. ain't afraid! <sighs> Is that my father? Yep. Yes, which means trouble is sure to follow. I need you to tail his accomplice. This crowd is a powder keg. We can't allow him to light the fuse. But... But nothing. Do as I say and go. Come on, you gosh got it. Haytham Kenway. Haytham Kenway. Is a Templar who came to the American colonies in 1754. What we've learned, Kenway was sent here by Grand Master Reginald Birch with a dual mission. Establish his own Templar group to rival the colonial assassins. And search for clues about artifacts related to the first civilization. When a Grand Master tells you to do something, you do it. Even if it's just a chess Grand Master. Kenway didn't find the artifacts he was looking for. He did, however, recruit a small dedicated band of Templars. He also attempted to forge a relationship with the... I can't pronounce that and one who in particular Zeal. The two were briefly lovers, and however brief it was, was enough because Zeal, unbeknownst to Hatham, ended up raising their son, Connor. I'm guessing it was Kenway who became Grand Master in the colonies, and therefore the man responsible for the 1763 attack on the colonial assassins. The attack wiped out most of the membership and almost all of our records from that era. It's never been clear exactly what happened in the attack, or how Kenway managed to make it such a complete surprise. In any case, I don't think I like this guy. Sorry to use such strong words. George Washington. Here's a name even you should recognize. George Washington, who will go on to be the leader of the army during the American Revolution and the first president of the United States. I was going to say you probably know everything I'm going to tell you, but that would be a lie. What you know is that George Washington has a lot of things named after him and anything else he learned in school you forgot because you thought you'd never used in real life. You should call your history teacher and tell her she was right all along. George Washington was the son of a planter from Virginia. He was raised with little education, but was ambitious, teaching himself mostly from books. Washington started in business early, speculating on land, starting at the age of 18. When he was 20, his older brother died, leaving him the heir of the family plantation at Mount Vernon, where he lived until his death, and where you can still visit his grave today. Washington got his military start during the French and Indian War, leading an expedition to Fort Duquesne in 1754 when he was 22, a destination he never reached, having surrendered at Fort Necessity. The next year, Washington headed to Fort Duquesne again, this time as a guide for Edward Braddock during the ill-fated Braddock expedition. 
Washington went to as a volunteer, hoping that working for Braddock would get him a track to military promotion. Though the battle was a rout, Washington earned credit for organizing the retreat, and later that year he was made a colonel in charge of the Virginia militia. Washington completely revamped the militia with hopes under his organization and training they would be accepted into the British military. They never were. Washington resigned his post in 1758. I won't say the snub led to his contempt for the British, but snubs rarely help. By the late 1760s, Washington had become active in political life, taking on a role in the Virginia House of Burgesses. He went on to be a member of the Continental Congress, and when the war broke out in 1775, it was Congress's choice to lead the army. At the time, Washington said, I do not think of myself equal to the command I am honored with, which I'm sure inspired complete confidence in everyone who heard it. Imagine if you were on an airplane and the captain opened with that. It's possible Washington was being falsely modest, but the fact is this. He wasn't a military genius and he knew it. Though I'm sure it hurts your American pride to hear me say he wasn't perfect. Washington had several narrow misses where the army could have easily been obliterated, at Manhattan and again at Brandywine, among others. Washington won an early victory, he broke the siege of Boston, but he then made the disaster move of fortifying New York, a city he couldn't defend without a navy he didn't have. Even you can work that one out. He spent the latter half of 1776 retreating across New York and New Jersey, losing battle after battle until Christmas when he pulled off a successful surprise attack the Hessian troops at Trenton. And while that battle makes for some famous paintings, and it did rally the flag in confidence of the Republic, it was a minor victory in the war. Coward! It doesn't shoot at me! Hey, lobster! Go ahead! Fire your little gun! You red back rum so bacon face out! I just fight you! Oi, you there! What's all the fuss about? Uh, I'm supposed to be telling you, you're not supposed to be telling me. No more! Yeah, I thought so. Your plot is ended. Not quite. Shit. Oh, damn you! Fire! Crown Coffee House. The name of this place is <coughs> somewhat misleading. <coughs> mm. It's likely that this coffee house sold more wine than coffee, since coffee was only just becoming popular. We know it's hard to imagine a time when people didn't enjoy their morning cup, but there you are. If we go by the number of bottles they had in stock, this was one of the busiest taverns in Boston. Likely because of its location. If you were arriving in Boston by ship in the 1700s, let's face it, you didn't fly in, this would have been the first tavern you saw. And since taverns were great places to get information, 
you might well have stopped there for a drink and the latest news. Let's keep moving. I need to find Achilles. Enemies will attack on sight, huh? Boston Ballers. Delivery request. So, oh, new item. Aha. Actually, let's do that later. Focus on getting here. Kondo can do that, Hatham can't. Over here, over here. Samuel Adams was a Boston lawyer, signatory of the Declaration of Independence, and a prominent politi political figure during the lead up to the American Revolution. I think that's put that's put your life, little life into perspective, hasn't it? Adams was born in Massachusetts, the son of another Samuel Adams, who was a well-off merchant. Adams, the younger one, went to Harvard, graduating in 1740, wanted to business for himself, but was a dismal failure, and ended up taking a job in a family brewery. A lot of men turn to breweries when their business fails, but in rather a different way. And that was fortunate for his historical legacy, since his relationship to beer may be the only reason most Americans have ever heard of him. Adams was elected to the Massachusetts legislature in 1765, which was the beginning of his political career. He was a staunch supporter of colonists' rights, mainly the ever-popular arguments over whether the British Parliament had the right to impose taxes, but wasn't for independence, at least not at first. I think it's fair to say he changed his mind later. Adams is often portrayed as an angry radical, but that's a bit of a biased picture. Adams disliked vigilantism, but for the most part, though he approved when a mob forced Boston's stamp collector to resign, so perhaps he only disliked some vigilantism. In later years, when Adams was in Congress, he refused even to join a political party because he found the idea divisive, a sentiment which he shared with Washington, incidentally. However, Adams' reputation for being a rebel rouser is somewhat under understandable. He was a representative for the town of Boston after the Boston Massacre and succeeded in having the regulars kicked out of town. He spoke at the Old South Meeting Hall just prior to the Boston Tea Party and it's said he gave the signal for the dumping of the tea, although there's some debate over whether he was involved, which I'm happy about as a gentleman does not waste tea. Adams was infamous enough that he had to leave Boston for Lexington in 1775 to avoid arrest by the British who considered him a troublemaker. When the siege of Boston began, the Massachusetts governor offered to pardon any rebels who would lay down their arms, except Adams and John Hancock. Overall, Adams certainly was a thorn in the side of the British, though what puzzles me is why some Americans think being an angry revolutionary was a bad thing. It got you where you are today, didn't it? Actually, hang about. Yes, maybe I see the point after all. You're Achilles' boy. Connor, was it? I saw what happened at the townhouse. A fine mess, that. Who are you? Samuel Adams, at your service. Achilles asked me to get you out of Boston. Explain. The whole city's looking for you. Oh, yay! Oh, yay! A criminal stalks the streets, wanted in connection with the massacre at the townhouse. Citizens are advised to call the guards if they see him. 
Ten pounds to whoever brings this mad man What am I supposed to, to do? Hello. Now you can take down these posters for a start. Return to me once you remove the others. Uh huh. I'm familiar with this. We can't be seen together until these posters are gone. That's why the level three. Wanted posters too. I'm now incognito. Wanna try that again? Oh. I'll find out about Jagos later. Thank you. No one sees me. There aren't any secondary objectives. Central Boston items. Not sure what that means.
Ah, Connor. There you are. I'd like you to meet Cyrus. Is it... is he the killer? Peace. Cyrus is on our side, or rather, for the right price, he will be. Have you seen this man? Watch and learn. Oh, yay! Oh, yay! Word has reached us that the man responsible for today's shooting may have been in disguise. A wig and makeup tin were found near the scene of the crime. Witnesses describe a middle-aged gentleman of pale complexion fleeing towards the wharves, rifle in arm. Thank you kindly, Cyrus. Pleasure. <laughs> Come on, man. There's still one last bit of work to do. Yeah, I recognize this from previous games. Where are we going? To the printer. Where do you think all those posters came from? They're made by a machine. We need to shut it down. So, do not raise neutrality to level 3. Okay, let's go. Damn it, we're too late. They've set up a checkpoint. Come on, this way. I can go by rooftop and meet you there. No. Better you learn about the tunnels now. Tunnels? The Masons have a whole network of them under the city. They're quite useful when speed and secrecy are required. Okay, show me. Do you want to show me? Come on. Nice. That's not good. Let's use another road. Ah, huh. okay. Uh, more patrols. Don't tread on me. <laughs> okay. Best way through there, but that is inaccess inaccessible, so we go through here.
Looks clear. Here we are then. I'll see you inside. Both stones most wanted. Okay, I have a few minutes left. Let's see what the next mission is. Hold on. Underground fast travel. Fast travel station found one. <clears throat> we need to get here. Let's start by going uh, right. No, that's. Is that exactly where I came from? Yeah. Okay. So over here. Use your lantern to light the lamps, Connor. They'll help us find our way should we get turned around. I wonder why they built these tunnels. Excellent. Let us move on. Mm, much as it pains me to say it, we must follow the rats, as they often move in the direction of an exit. Huh, good to know. You were right. I apologize for ever doubting. No wonder Achilles has taken such an interest in you. Arse. <laughs> I don't suppose lockpicking is part of your repertoire? Hang on a minute. Stupid lockpicking in the game? Yeah. Printer isn't far. Let us reconvene there. What is an interesting concept that you need to activate the first level stations? I am not allowed to one. Okay. Are these Patriots? Well, they mock them red. Winter Shop, Smith and Co. Printing presses were originally brought to America to print religious texts, but by the time of the Revolutionary War they were also used for things like newspapers, pamphlets, and broadsheets. Um, yeah, I already read that one.
You ask a great deal of me, Sam. I know. But I wouldn't be here if it wasn't important, if it wasn't vital. Fine. Just this once, though. In the future, such things will come at a price. Resetting the type is neither quick nor easy. To say nothing of the cost should I be discovered. I shall not forget this kindness. Nor I. <laughs> His work will see your last little bit of notoriety erased. Come. I'll show you how to leave now that order's been restored. So, now you've had a chance to see how it all works. Untoward actions will upset the citizens and inevitably lead to the guards being called. Depending on the severity of your transgression, they may simply search a bit before giving up and returning to their posts. But should you offend them severely or repeatedly, they'll become much more aggressive in their pursuits. I've shown you three ways to turn the tide. Remove wanted posters, bribe town criers, or visit a printer to create your own propaganda. This feels wrong. Why not just speak to someone and explain my innocence? <laughs> you can't be serious. You counter one lie with another. Words on paper instantly taken as truth. Well, and all of it without question. They loose this beast. Or have you forgotten? I merely helped you tame and turn it round. There must be another way. Hang on. I need to sell stuff. Sell everything. Buy. Else. Wait. Something more honest. But when you find it, do let me know. But until then, we sculpt with the clay we have. My apologies. I do not mean to sound ungrateful. Quite all right. I was much the same at your age. You'll grow out of it. And mm. if I do not? If I refuse? Here we are. Speak with the harbor master and he'll see you home. Thank you for everything, Sam. I promise one day to repay the favor. Oh, I'm counting on it. Mm-hmm. Like this. What? That's how you do it? <laughs> oh, someone's been taken away. That's level two. Okay, what do we have on the map close by? Our master tutorial. Tavern. Fast travel. Let's do fast travel. Unlock this thing. Didn't give me anything new. I seriously need a new outfit. Any good games? No. Daniel Boone. Daniel Boone was a hunter and trapper who, through skill and luck, went on to become a near mythic figure in stories about the American frontier. Boone was born in Pennsylvania, moved his family to North Carolina in 1752, traveled the frontier frequently, hunting and trapping expeditions across modern day North Carolina, Florida, and into Kentucky. This goes on, but I'll stop it there because it's just a list of places and that can be quite tedious. Boone is credited with discovering Kentucky, which is ridiculous, uh, as I'm sure someone else must have seen it once. He did have a major role in colonization by the Europeans. In 1773, Boone headed for the interior of Kentucky with a group of settlers, in intention of starting a new town. The Kentucky interior had technically been ceded to the British after the Treaty of Stanwix. Not all indigenous residents agreed with the treaty. Uh, Boone's group hadn't gone far when the party was attacked. Boone's son was captured and tortured to death. The colonists left. 
Boom went back in 1775, hired by Transylvania Company to blaze a trail known as the Wilderness Trail. Boone settled in the area, founding the town of Boonesboro, arrogant, which he later helped to save from attack by Sh Sh Shawnee warriors. Boone was made famous in his later years not so much by his adventures, though he had many, which I'm sure he'll tell you all about, but by the books written about his life, some of which contain, let's just call them, historical inaccuracies. The one where he wrestled a 60-foot man-fish springs to mind. In reality, Boone wasn't one to embellish his experiences, which may be why people felt the need to do it for him. Are you playing an interesting game? Nope. I'll see myself out. Okay, how about Master Tutorial? What is the tutorial? Oh ho! Frontier, Terraform Homestead. There are more locations. Okay. Yes. Okay, I should close this session out. Oh, I'm getting this. What did you hit him with? Wolf. Wolves have keen sensors, use attack in packs, move text by they will stock it, bait poison darts, place bait, yeah yeah, pelt and fangs. Okay, what did I get? Yeah, I'm gonna get to the mission, to the homestead, and then I'm gonna save. What happened here? Someone didn't have a good voyage. Let's try to do that. This looks climbable.
The Lost Sons Return. Welcome back. You left me in Boston. The training we've done here is all well and good, but experience is a better teacher by far. What of my father? Into the wind, I'm afraid. We have to find him. And we will, after the house has been repaired. But he's out there plotting who knows what. And what would you do when you found him, if you found him? You're a boy with a few months of training. He's a man, full grown, who spent decades honing his skills. If you're going to stand a chance against the Templars, you're going to need these. The hidden blades. The hidden blades. Go on before I change my mind. <laughs> What? Help! Kill 25 enemies with hidden blades, kill a bear with the hidden blades. Help! 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 Okay, Godfrey will have to wait, because I have to go to sleep. This was fun. I'm enjoying this, except for the very poor controls and the quality of life is still very low. The spelling mistakes, and yeah, but I'm gonna finish this. Good night. Stay good, have fun.